the world today is going through a crisis and this crisis is driven by two important phenomena first one is the climate change and second is the rising geopolitical conflicts these two phenomena has a power to severely impact the human lives and create economic losses and also at the same time bring inefficiencies across industries over the last few decades these two factors have been responsible for a multifold increase in the damages happening across the globe be it in the industries or be it in the form of conflicts that are happening around different countries across the globe let's take few examples to understand the severeness of this problem when it comes to the maritime sector there has been an approximate 35% increase in the insurance claims happening because of the extreme weather events also with the rising conflicts there has been an increase in the insurance premiums across this sector with this the shippers are now taking longer routes causing inefficiencies across this sector and the shipments are taking longer time to reach from point a to point b at the same time with these conflicts there is a rise in the pirate incidents and illegal activities and also in the human right violations and with the push for the greener fuels and an emphasis on the reduction in the carbon and sulfur dioxide footprint there is an increase on the taxes across this sector similarly when we take the example for the aviation sector a similar thing is happening there as well there is approximately a 40% increase in the clean air turbulence in last 30 years and a additional 40% increase is expected by the year 2050 as the surface temperatures rise there is a decrease in the density which is happening near the earth surface resulting in a decrease in the carrying capacity of the passenger and cargo aircrafts with this it is causing a severe impact on the passengers and also the flight operations causing airlines up to 500 million dollars every year at the same time this phenomena also impacts the airports as well decreasing the efficiency of the performance of these airports and with this similar to maritime sector there has been an increase in the insurance premiums thereby bringing an inefficiency throughout this sector so coming to how this type of data sets are currently monitored currently when we talk about the monitoring of such incidents it happens through an infrastructure which is known as remote sensing infrastructure this infrastructure is divided into two categories first one is the ground segment which is the terrestrial infrastructure responsible for the collection of these data sets and second is the space infrastructure so when it comes to the terrestrial infrastructure or the ground infrastructure there are different sensors placed all across the globe to collect this type of data sets but the biggest problem is the cost of these sensors these cost uh, these costs are approximately like 500 to 600 thousand dollars per sensor and then when it comes to the data collection there is a scattered approach so if one sensor is placed in city a and the other sensor is placed in city b and the distance between these cities is is 4 to 500 kilometers the resolution and accuracy of the data in the city a will be higher and in the city b will also be higher but the distance in between there will be a less accuracy and less resolution resolution available and also the biggest problem with this type of infrastructure is the scalability you cannot just start deploying sensors everywhere on earth and another another challenge is the maintenance cost every time there is a human intervention which is required whenever there is a problem with the sensor and that also comes at an additional cost and then coming to the space based infrastructure everybody knows that there, there, there are big satellites which are collecting multiple data sets but the problem is that all these satellites are collecting different different data sets resulting in higher latencies when it comes to the collection of these data sets and another problem is that most of the earth observation or remote sensing satellites that are currently out there these are imaging satellites that means all these satellites can be used for change detection so when you take image of one place 
you will have to take 10, 15 different images over a period of time to understand what is exactly happening at that particular point in time, which not only consumes a lot of time, but also requires very heavy processing power in order to actually understand what exactly has happened over a period of time. But if you want to monitor the action which is taking place right in point in time at a particular geographic location, that is not at all possible. So all these things result in data gaps. And these data gaps account for losses of around $890 billion across industries globally, annually. And how do we cut down these losses? Is there any solution? Or is there a solution which we all can use and cut down on these losses? So the only solution that can drive this change is a new type of infrastructure which can address the losses and at the same time can provide a critical information data sets to the industries through which they can take informed and efficient decisions. And this is what we are trying to build. We are building an entirely new radio satellite infrastructure by deploying nano satellites which are capable of collecting these critical data sets and giving this information to the customers as soon as it is received in the form of decision intelligence insights how we are doing it. On the left side, you are seeing a satellite which is just like a minibus. The size of uh, this satellite, as you can see, with a human standing next to it. And the weight of this satellite is approximately 700 to 800 kgs. And the cost, cost is in 10 to 15 million dollars. So what we are doing? We are deploying a small satellite. What is the size of this satellite? This is just like a two liter soda can. So what is the benefit of this satellite? With the advancement in the electronics and the reduction in the size of the electronics, it has enabled the industry to create much more sophisticated technologies in a very small form factor. And that, that is what we are doing. This not only enables 100 times reduction in the cost, 10 times reduction in the size, but also has the capability to provide 24-7 coverage across the globe. And additional advantage, the scalability. We can deploy multiple such satellites in the cost of a single big satellite which is conventionally built and launched up there. Another solution that it, this type of satellite is capable of providing is the reprogrammability. That means you can give the command to the satellite so that it can collect the type of data which you actually need at a particular given point in time. And that enables the collection of multiple data sets with the help of just a single satellite. So now, how are we doing it? We are deploying these satellites in the lower Earth orbit, which is approximately 500 to 600 kilometers altitude. What these satellites do? So what we are doing is we are collecting radio signals originating from different industries. Everybody knows that all of the industries are now using some kind of radio device. We are collecting the radio beacons originating from these industries and are using that data to provide monitoring of the assets in real time. And at the same time, this satellite has a capability to assess how these radio frequencies interact with the atmosphere, thereby enabling us to provide the information about the situational awareness, which is the information of the Earth's surface and atmospheric weather forecasting, thereby enabling a complete set of data sets which can enable the industries to take efficient and quick decisions. So a single satellite is capable of providing six times more data sets for per square kilometer. And every single dollar spent on the satellite gives us six times more output in terms of commercial value. Ultimately, all these data sets which are collected with the help of the satellite are dismantled on a decision intelligence platform which has a capability to provide precise multi-data information with the help of AI analytics and tools. And at the same time, enabling contextualization of the information. What does contextualization mean? So different layers of data sets which are collected are actually able to talk to each other. So the impact of the weather is directly visible on the trail of the ship. That means through that, you can directly see what sort of impact a ship is facing during an extreme weather event, thereby enabling you to assess what time it is going to reach at a particular harbor, how much of a carbon emissions has increased in that particular zone, 
what type of increase is there in the sulfur dioxide emissions and that is what which enables informed decision making for these sectors. So just by taking example for the impact, what sort of impact this type of solution is able to bring. We are talking about an impact on the maritime sector by enabling them with the help of quick decision making with the help of this type of platform. A greater impact on the aviation and airport operations and also an impact on the disaster management. So when it comes to the monitoring of the disasters, it is also about the forecast information. If you are able to forecast what kind of disaster there is going to be, what kind of impact it is going to create, there is a higher degree of chance that you can save the human and economic toll with these disasters. And also there is a rising increase in the events such as flash flood events, landslides, these are also the phenomena which needs higher level of forecasting in order to understand what kind of impact they are going to bring. That way you can take informed decisions if this type of data is available to the user. This information is also important for the security forces. By enabling the access to the asset monitoring, you can ac actually monitor and cut down the impact which happens with the increased amount of threats that are emerging out there in the globe. And at the same time, drought is also one of the reasons which impacts the food security across the globe. This type of informed decision making has also an impact on such type of events as well, thereby enabling a sustainable and better future. Thank you so much.